Hi, everybody. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to look at timers. Timers is a great topic. It's a fun topic. Um, I think it's something you'll all like. So, uh, let's get to it, and I'll explain what timers are and how we use them in code. So we're going to do the for the first project here, we're going to do a countdown project. Uh, we're just going to do, we're going to push a button. We're going to watch a clock count down from 10 to 0. Um, so you can call that assignment. Uh, Countdown, if you'd like. And put that together. So, um, the biggest thing about timers is you're going to like is that they do not have a lot of properties uh, that go with it. So, when we find a timer in the toolbox, uh, you're going to notice that when we drag a timer on, and we're just going to use one in this assignment, when I drag a timer on, wherever you put it on the sheet, it doesn't stay on the form it actually slides below the form so you're going to notice i dropped it now my timer is down here at the bottom of the page timer one a timer is something that we can put code into and a timer can be linked to real time so when we look at looping down the road looping's linked to the computer's um processor or or, or processing speed i guess you could say uh and with timers it's going to keep executing the same code over and over again until you stop the timer. And how often does it do it? Well, if you set a timer to do it, to execute the code every second, it'll do it every second. If you set the code for it to do it every minute, it will do it every minute. Uh, so they're a lot of fun to do. And in this case, we're going to look at the countdown. So I'm going to click on my timer like it is, and I'm going to show you the properties window. There aren't many properties at all. Here we have about six or five. Uh, so we have the name, uh, which we'll just keep it at timer one. It does it get confusing when you have about 20 timers or five timers on you and you, you're not sure what controls one? Yes. Uh, but for us, we'll just leave it at timer one for now. The main properties here are interval. So one interval is uh, one um, millisecond. An interval of one is one millisecond. So to us to get a real second, you need to have an interval of a thousand. So 1000 milliseconds is a second. Uh, and that will um, make things happen every second. So interval is a big property and enabled. Right now the timer is set at false, so true or false. So is a timer started, uh, start the timer is true, stop the timer is false. So just enabled the interval, how fast you want things to, uh, to go through the code every what? In this case, every second. So let's see what I mean here. Uh, so let's put a button on here. I guess the first thing you do, if you could put a timer on and change the interval to a thousand, that would be great, just like we have. So you just need one timer. The next thing we're going to have to put on is a button and a label. So uh, we'll put a button and a label on. And all we're going to have is the button's going to be our start. So we're going to start the timer with this button. And our label will start at a 10. So we'll have the text say 10. And what we'll do is, just so you can see better, I'm just going to make my font a little bit bigger here. Okay. So when I click the start button, this will tick down from 10 and we'll stop at zero. So we might be able to get away with, um, in the timer code, if we go to timer code, sorry, we go to the start button first and we double click on it. What do we want to happen when the start button's clicked? So when the start button's clicked, I want timer one dot enabled equals true. So I want to start the timer. So when you click the start button, I want you to start the timer. Okay, that's it. So now what do we want to happen when the timer starts? So what I'd like to happen is I'd like this 10 to go to nine and then go to eight, go to seven, go to six, all the way down to zero. So let's go to the timer code. So what would I like to happen when the timer is starts? So when the timer starts, I'd like label one dot text equals if usually you don't you can't get away with this as far as you you have to use variables but i think for this assignment we can 
and it's one. So what I'm asking here is that label one dot text, which currently is at 10, is going to equal label one dot text minus one. So 10 minus one is nine. Usually I have to use variables. Let's take a look here, see if we can kind of make the shortcut work. Okay, so it's ticking down here, but you're going to notice now I haven't done anything to, to stop it once it gets to zero. So it's just going to keep going. And every second, because my intervals set the timer intervals every second, it subtracts one off this number here in the program. So I'll show you what I mean. What happens if I speed up this timer or the timer interval? So we'll go back. We'll take a look at the properties. And what happens if I set the interval to uh, 100, like the default? Well, it's, things are going to happen a lot quicker. So watch what happens now. So when I hit start, things aren't happening every second. The interval is set at 100 milliseconds. So that's a tenth of a second. And this will keep going and going and going. So we can link or set our interval to the amount of time we want things to be executed. So if we set the interval to a thousand, which is one second, it's going to execute the code that we write in that timer every second. So let's stop this. Okay, so going back to the program, let's put this back at a thousand. Now, only thing left is we need a little bit of code for what happens when this gets to zero. Well, let's put it right, right here. Let's do a little if statement. So if the one dot text, oof, usually the equals zero doesn't work, but we'll try it. We have to do a less than equal than sign. Then we're going to timer one dot enabled equals false. So we're going to stop the timer. Let's see if this works. I don't really trust this part. I like to do things a little bit differently, but I just want to keep it simple. It's our first assignment uh, working with timers. Let's see if it'll stop at zero. I have a feeling it may stop at negative one, but let's take a look. Okay, we've started the timer. Okay, perfect. It stopped at zero. Now, what if we wanted some other fun stuff to happen when the timer got to zero? So all we have to do is just keep writing and listing things we want to happen when that hits the zero. So what I could do is change the color of the back color form. So B, which is the current form, dot back color equals color dot, okay, sure, we'll say blue. Okay, so now let's take a look. So you could have um, a picture of a, of an explosion happen. Uh, you could have a dancing uh, a dancing cat, whatever you'd like. But for now, ours should stop at zero, and then the form changes color. So that's it for timers for the first lesson. The next one, what we'll do is we're going to link a timer and how we can kind of use animation and get some sprites to kind of link up and, and look like we have some animation in a program. Um, but that's it for now. So if you can replicate this program, that would be great. Thanks so much.